Hey, everybody. Welcome to the future of photography. Uh, as you can see, um, if you're watching this on video, we are again in video this week and we're improving our technology as we go. For those of you that are listening only on a podcast, I'd just like to let you know I'm wearing my TFOP t-shirt today. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there, there are still a few uh, very poor souls out there who do not watch it, but who listen to it. But, uh, yeah, yeah. The, tf the, the, the TFOP sheet. Yeah. Well, yes. So, so we haven't talked about this for <laughs> such a long time, but, but there, there could be many listeners out there actually who didn't know that the name of the robot is actually Evie. And that was a uh, that was actually chosen uh, from uh, listeners who submitted names uh, and and thereby won T-shirts. Oh, a long, long time ago. Can you tell me when that was, Chris? It was back in the early days, wasn't it? Somewhere before before one of those wars. Yeah, long time ago. <laughs> a long time ago. Yeah, long, long time ago. Anyway, uh, enough said. Enough said about that. That's just a, a little bit of way of uh, introduction. Chris, tell us how you are. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing wonderful after figuring out all the recording thing and everything. But hey, we look so good today. Everything is wonderful. <laughs> um, and uh, the recording sounds good. So hey, I'm happy. We have a new we have a new show coming up. That's good. Excellent. Good stuff. Ema, how are you? I'm good as well. Really, really, really busy. So you're lucky I didn't dip out of this one. <laughs> 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 I got to put my head here now for an hour and then go back well, to what I'm doing. For the video, we have to think what we put in a spot when someone can't make it. So, um, yeah, maybe Evie, <laughs> maybe Evie, yeah, maybe Evie, yes, or we could all get cardboard cutouts made of ourselves or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremiah, how are you doing? Uh, good considering <laughs> in the center of uh, the California lunacy, um, but uh, doing well, busy also, very busy, mm, yes, as, as and how are, are you all, doing? Sure. Me, I'm well, thank you. I think um, uh, I actually went to the beach yesterday uh, wow. down down on the south coast of England, and uh, it was a, probably a good forty mile an hour wind. And uh, if there were any cobwebs, <laughs> they got blown <laughs> away very very quickly. But it was amazing to have a huge amount of space to to play around and run around in. So very much enjoyed that. Yeah. Oh, lovely. Yeah. So uh, anyway. Uh, today's show. Today's show is a, a blend of current, common themes, memes, whatever you'd like to call it. Uh, but we'll, of course, uh, we'll try and put our own angle on it, as we always try to do. And uh, what I'd like to try and do is is blend uh, our enthusiasm and interest in photography uh, with a very popular trend right now, which is minimalism. And uh, it's something which uh, is increasing and increasing and increasing in the last, I don't know, five years or so. But is um, uh, I think got a got a bit of a, a kick off the back of the COVID-19 lockdowns as well, because, of course, people have got some more time on their hands sometimes. <laughs> and uh, and of course, are stuck in their houses and, and need to sort them out when they can ignore it if they're out of work all day. <laughs> At least that's what we do in our house anyway. <laughs> So I, I've been reading up on some stuff, some research just for, for this conversation. Uh, and I, I think photography, it has a part to play in all of this. And especially in, in the future of, of managing, our, managing our lives, managing our clutter, managing our, our stuff and our junk. Um, because a lot of people will say, well, stuff has memories. So, you know, I have to keep this because it's got memories in it. And I think to myself, well, well, does it? Because if I look at an old photograph, it could be a print, it could be a, a, a scan of an old photograph, whatever. Is it, is it the actual physical thing that has the memory in it? Or, or is it the image that triggers a memory? And so... That's, that is a fantastic um, proposition in terms of discussion. Mm. Uh, sidebar is when I was moving house about, I don't know, six or seven years ago, um, I moved from a, a much larger house um, where I brought my kids to a smaller house and was faced with, you know, 20 years of, accumulator war, of accumulated stuff. And as I kind of tried to shed most of it and not... Um, put all of it in storage for, you know, 
for the next millennium. Um, I thought one way to do this is what if I did as as a project photographed every thing that I own and put it in a book <laughs> and then got rid of everything and had the book as my memory. Of course, I never did this, but coincidentally, I did at an art book fair here about three or four years ago, um, and I've got it somewhere in my library here, is some artist did exactly that. Wow. Uh, Self-published. And it was really, <laughs> it was so inspired because, it, in so many ways, those little, whether they're tchotchkes or whether they're kind of beautiful rendered pieces of art, the actual collection of it in a book was so profound. And I felt a lot easier to carry along with you as you kind of move forward. And so I'm with the school that says it's the the combination of your memory and the trigger of the image which gives you the emotion associated with the object that you have or see interesting I, I, a book of stuff with uh, and then you don't need mm. the stuff i, I kind of like that idea well it, i mean of course that only works with things that you don't really need physically need um so this could be yeah, so i'm not and, talking and, about i'm not talking about essentials right obviously taking a picture mm. of our toilet you can't you can't really you, you can't use your vacuum your picture of your vacuum cleaner to clean your house that doesn't yeah, work yeah i was gonna go <laughs> with coffee pot but yeah <laughs> yeah but but in terms of all the little pretty things that one has accumulated that one just uses and surrounds oneself for whether it's nostalgia memory um comfort uh inspiration you know i i don't know because mm, i i had this thought i'm i'm not a hoarder um uh, i i get i try to regularly clear out stuff uh especially stuff that hasn't been used for some time now i'm not the only person that that lives in this house i have a whole family and so i, I can't throw away their stuff sadly it's not often um they get annoyed um but the but but i i prefer not to be surrounded by too much stuff i prefer the the simplicity of it to, to a point to a, to a point i'm not i'm not a, a died in the wool minimalist but I so I I think that there is a way that photography for for many people can can in some ways replace the thing. If you're if you're keeping the thing not because you use it uh, but because it triggers a particular memory, possibly you could in a lot of cases get rid of the thing but just let the image that you've captured of it uh trigger the memory. But then that isn't a catch all for everybody. Because not everybody has their memory triggered by sights. So I think, um, and without going into too much science, because I haven't done enough, uh, I haven't got the stats to, to hand here. I couldn't find them in time. But there is, uh, it is, a, I believe, a majority of people whose primary sense is sight. And so when you think about it, you think, you know, maybe, maybe you, uh, you, you picture things in your mind. Um, you, so, uh, and a lot of, if you think about certainly the English language and Chris, I'd be interested if in the German view of this is a lot of the, uh, metaphors that you use about things that are in your head are vision based metaphors. I can see a picture in my mind. I can, I can picture this, I can picture that, um, as opposed to, I can smell this or I can hear that, but there mm. are people, there are people whose primary sense and who and and therefore whose memories are triggered by smell or or by touch or by uh, uh by sound by audio so i i didn't feel perhaps that i don't think it's a direct replacement um but i'd be uh, and i suspect that many photographers are people whose primary sense is sight um but i'd be i was interested in the th the three of you guys what you think about that do you do, yeah what do you consider your primary sense to be um do you know anybody whose primary sense is different you know possibly one of the minority ones i don't know ema what do you think about that i kind of agree with you about vision being probably the the well probably in my own case definitely it would definitely be my primary sense but um smell is something that i suppose if you encounter a certain smell then the memory is triggered. Um, but they're very particular smells, like smells from childhood, like um, 
the smell of school. I always get the same smell when I go into a primary school. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't know what. Uh, Sweaty kids. I don't kids know what smell. the right term for it is where you are, but you know, <laughs> primary school, your first school. Yeah, yeah. It just, it's, I don't know what it is. It's the smell of pencils or crayons or <laughs> all that kind of stuff. Paper. Uh, yeah, it has a very particular smell. So smells do conjure up, I think, sometimes. Or like smoke, pipe smoke. Whenever I smell pipe smoke, I was thinking of my dad because he smoked pipe. So it always brings back, um, and, and like older men as well, like my, my granddad maybe, or you know, uh, grand uncles and things like that, that had a particular brand of tobacco that they smoked with a particular smell would always trigger memories in me. Um, but uh, yeah, I think, I suppose vision is for those of us who are lucky enough to have sight, our, our most, our strongest uh, sense in that. Maybe because if you see something profound, it has a tendency to linger with you for longer or that your brain has the the ability to recall the picture quicker than than any other of your senses. I I don't know. Um, I'm kind of with you on the whole minimalism thing, though, because I don't think things are, like objects are that important. It would be a very particular object that I wouldn't throw away, you know, and it would have a memory, a, a very specific memory attached to it, like. You know, obviously a gift, maybe someone gave you or um, something that you've had since childhood is something you'd be less likely to throw away and take a picture of. I'd still think I'd want the object. but So that's a good test, said, isn't it, for this theory? Mm-hmm. If, if you could picture right now or, yeah. or think Define. about right now that what, one, of, one of those small number of things that is precious to you. Mm. Do, do, uh, uh, and do you think that uh, replacing the thing with a photograph would, would would dilute that or would it be the same or would it be different in some no. qualitative way? I think it would definitely dilute the experience of having the thing for me because, uh, yeah, there's a couple, only a couple of things that I have that I would never, ever get rid of. Uh, but specifically for the kind of, the deep memories that they do bring up, you know? So it would have to be hmm. <sighs> define how important a memory is. <laughs> Who can do that? You know, it's, it's, you know, that's different for everybody. So, um, and, and some people are very precious about it. every object they have. Like one thing I can't really throw out is books. Books are very difficult to throw away because I think, you know, they don't, <laughs> Exactly. I'm looking behind you, Jeremiah, there at all your books. And I have a, a, a bookcase that's quite similar. But um, yeah, that, a... that is one thing that you, you'll always go back to. And a tactile book, I don't care what anyone says, is so much better than reading, uh, uh, you know, an e-book or, or a Kindle or one of those things. It's just infinitely In- interesting go on then yeah. jeremiah we can see uh, from your camera view that you do have an enormous bookshelf behind no, no, you that's so exactly the that's it. exactly the amount of books he has it ends right that's outside it. the frame oh, right. I see. <laughs> i've moved everything there. <laughs> ne- next week i'll give you a different angle of the uh, uh, of the studio I-, I do have a question though and it really is i think science-based and i could be talking out of my ass here but i think that smell is the most active trigger Oh, the fastest one me- too. The fastest because, because the, look, the, yeah. the 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 sense the the cells that sense the smell are part of the brain. They are like connected straight to the brain. There's no ah. dude, interpretation. That's, that's 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 one that's it's one just, of the things um, why why the the virus takes away your smell first because it has something does something to the brain. So it is one of these. Like it's the most immediate sense that has no filtering, no nothing between it. Um, the visual sense is our most complicated sense. Over half of our brain is active when we process visuals. So it really touches every part of the brain almost. And yes. it's a very indirect kind of sense. And in in that way, um, it, I, I don't know, for, for me personally, the, the a smell is an important sense. Um, the visual sense is one that I think took a long time to, to, to practice, to train, to get to the point where it is now also our visual sense uh, if we're talking specifically about photography which i assume we are um <laughs> maybe uh, is the the especially those of us who are kind of very attracted to black and white 
We look at a black and white photograph, which by its nature is very abstract. It's a complete abstracted interpolation of reality, whatever that is, um, in terms of light values, and then applied to a, you know, whether it's a piece of paper or a screen generating some light. And, and so it, it is extraordinarily uh, distant from the true object or manifestation. I mean, when we travel and we have pure memory of being down a road, noticing a market or going through a market, it's very different than looking at an image we took of that market and the trigger of that experience that comes from the photograph. So there, th there are very distinct memory triggers of um, kind of abstract memory within and a reaction to an abstraction, even color photograph. I mean, they're, they're effectively abstract, which we interpret as um, based on reality. Uh, so I think the experiences of memory are, are very distinct. Uh, one may be wistful, uh, one may be more emotional, it depends how we kind of have kind of committed those circuits when we originated that experience how we apply it to the different areas of our brain, which we know carry memory in different ways. I mean, I can, you know, it's like when you're at a party and somebody introduces themselves and like one second later, you go like, what was his name? Mm. Oh, that's me. That's totally to me. I do that all the time. I'm quite good <laughs> yeah, with faces. I well, recognize them when I meet them later. Yeah, you can remember your childhood phone number, like with clarity, oh. or or, or uh, the lyrics to a song you learned, you know, in grade three, like yeah. with absolute mm. dedication. So those are memories, but they are interp interpreted differently. And we also know that we have something called buffer dumping, which is the brain will get rid of what it knows is non-essential information. Does it really um, do that, or yeah, does it just it does. hide it away? That's in interesting. Some... I think no, I have no, an no. overactive one of those. Then <laughs> no, I think it gets rid of it. I really okay. do. I mean, I, based on my own experience, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so okay. So so this is this is interesting, and and yeah, I'd like to keep pushing the conversation forward, if I may, a bit, and and. Um, yeah. Ne next thing, I guess, is or the ne next sort of element of, of topic or next question is that yeah, we talk a lot about photographs needing to last and and there's all sorts yeah you can go whether whether it's digital backup strategies on youtube or whether it's you know the art of printing and uh, and archival materials and things like that i i have a question and and uh, you know i I'd like to ask Chris's view on this first, actually, because you know, because Chris practices photography across a, a you know a whole range of, of disciplines and, and thought and processes. Um, what 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 is important about making an image last? I mean, we live in a in a world where you know these the, there are billions of photographs produced every day, and many of them are very similar. If I go to the beach and take a photograph and somebody else goes to the beach and takes a photograph, that's kind of going to be similar, isn't it? um but is it the image that's important, or is it the the memory that's important what do you, what do you think chris well I think it's what the image attaches to you uh or to what's in what I call your backpack. We have this backpack on our back that we fill with memories that we fill with conditionings with all sorts of things throughout our lives experiences and whenever you look at a photo you will inevitably make links subconsciously with whatever is in your backpack and um and for me a photo isn't necessarily just a nice or or, or a good photo but it is good to someone it's always a different photo for a different person because they all have different mm -hmm. backpacks on. So I think that um, that this is a probably one of the most individual things. I I I know people. There are people who claim there is kind of a universal beauty that can be defined, but I, I'm not a fan of that thought. I think it I really agree. is entirely 100% in the eye of the beholder. Mm -hmm. So um, there is no universal definition for what is beautiful i don't think uh, so. also mm -hmm. in terms of making something last which may not have a direct connection to beauty or aesthetics 
Uh, true, if, if, true. If on that beach, you took that photo, and it was just what we would consider the ocean, the beach, you know, the sky, the water, the horizon. I mean, a photograph that had been done thousands, if not millions of times. But if I show you that same image, and I said this was taken by Felix Beto in, <laughs> you know, in the Sinai in 1860, you know, traveling along, or me during the, the virus shutdown of the beach where I snuck <laughs> on. And, and, and it's the same effective image. You would have completely different reactions. So what I'm really trying to say is context to imagery and photographs and when they're taken, when they're seen, mm. by whom, and in, in, in what capacity culturally will always directly link to how long they last. There, there is a, there's a bit of research where well, there's lots of research about um, how much, how good you think something is the moment you know what it cost. And they've done this with wine when they gave cheap wine to people <laughs> and told it was really expensive yeah. and vice versa. And um, there was a significant difference in, <clears throat> in how much someone liked a wine the more they thought it, was, uh, it, it, it cost. I can well that's imagine cool. that being the case, and and I often, yeah, you, know, you, you, I don't think that's the only <laughs> example. I think there are lots of luxury goods where the the price is is part oh, yeah. of it. Um, I and, have the best example of fashion, the art, fashion the art in general, world. right? Yeah, oh, yeah, fashion. Yeah, well, diamonds. Yeah. Oh yes, diamonds are the absolute best example of that. I, years and years and years ago, and I I kind of regret doing this now. But when I was a commercial director, I was hired by De Beers to do a commercial. Diamonds are forever. They were, that's what the whole thing is. And so they, I was living in New York. They flew me to London to meet with the CEO on the Concorde, of course. <laughs> Right, you know, yeah, I show <laughs> This <laughs> is my a, dream, <laughs> right? It's the it's like you you want to have a meeting with me, and I'm going to London for the day on the Concord or Concord, as they said, never the. Um, but they took me through the vaults, and there were just vaults there. There are vaults in South Africa. There are vaults all over the world. Turned out it's a terrible company, and I was just oh my god, apoplectic years later. But. There are trillions of diamonds. Diamonds are not rare at all. No, diamonds are no. a very, very common stone. But De Beers and the entire diamond industry have created the mythos to make it feel like it's valuable. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, above all, I mean, there are perfumes that fit that bill. Of course, there are food and those luxury items. But I always felt the diamonds themselves, to have something that you just pull from the earth, it's just like the accident of carbon being crushed by the shifting of the planet, created this rare thing. Now, meteorites, I understand, are rare because they don't fall from the sky all that often. But um, creating the um, illusion of value also doesn't preclude the effectiveness of our embrace of it. I mean, what is valuable? I mean, if we just are reducing it, right? Real value is our relationships, uh, our connection to our society, our, you know, the, the dinners we have with friends, remember those, um, <laughs> you, know, uh, sh you know, sharing experiences, those are real value. I mean, nobody is going to be on their deathbed in their last few minutes going, Oh God, that diamond I bought in nineteen, you know, eighty-five. Yeah. I'm so glad I kept that. No, they're gonna. F and, and, and so, as we ascribe value, and we we work kind of antagonistically with our consumer culture around that, um, and shifting back to photographic minimalism, sometimes the image itself, a very specific and I would say more zen-like. Um, focus on a single moment or object um, gives us a new appreciation of the simplicity of our appreciation of the planet around us. And, and I think that's where, when we sublimate to taking those kind of minimalistic pictures, 
I think we give in to a, a, a really great impulse of simplification and connection. Well, li- life is very complex, yeah. isn't it? Um, these days, uh, for for everybody, I've heard, yeah, wh- I've wherever heard. you are, for whatever reasons, li- <laughs> life is quite complex, and uh, and there's lots of things, lots of plates to keep spinning, and and this is, I think, is part of why minimalism is is becoming popular, or or is is now more, more popular. I've been trying to, yeah, I like, I have to say, I like Chris's idea of a backpack. Um, I in because I, I was trying to think, well, actually. What what is my answer to this? What is the future? Yeah, our, our question. What does this mean for the future of photography? I think this is quite a subjective question this week, because different things, as Ema says, different things mean different. Yeah, it ha- have uh, importance or, or not, uh, depending on who you are, the circumstances, the context. And I I could probably count on the fingers of one hand the the the, the things that are important mm-hmm. to me, and um, and even then. I probably wouldn't cry too much, but the the what would I what I'd like to leave? What's what's my if that's the case? So what are photographs capturing for me? What are the memories they're triggering? And and what does what does that mean in the in the slightly longer term? Possibly the term when may, maybe I'm no longer around uh, for whatever reason. And I, I for my for myself uh, and I'd be interested in hearing everybody's views on this for myself I think that a photograph is uh, is a very precious thing or, or the image is a very precious thing mm. if it can trigger a memory of something wonderful to you and and you know that could be whatever kind of experience it could be it could something it could be something uh, as as shallow as a good steak <laughs> or it could be something as meaningful as, as the most wonderful thing that ever happened in your life to the people that you love. And and f- uh, and then I think about, well, actually, I take a lot of photographs um, and that's a good thing, isn't it? Because then I'll be capturing mm. more moments and, and, and of them, a, a select few of those um, w- would would be meaningful moments. Uh, so it's good to always carry a camera with you and always take lots of photographs because then you, when when the time comes where something meaningful does happen, you'll be prepared and you'll have been practicing. So that's a good thing, right? But then, Absolutely. How do-, do you know those? Sorry, Adrian. Do you know those um, photo books that seem to pop up everywhere now? It's like um, have uh, a photo book made from your Facebook photographs. Um, these ads hmm. are just popping up everywhere and you don't have to do anything. You don't have to put the book together. You just let them handle it and they send you back the book. So a friend of mine did this the other day. I, I never would have gone for it, but it was 10 years worth of photographs wow. from her Facebook feed. Now, I don't do that, so I don't have that sort of collection, so I can't do it even if I wanted to. <laughs> but um, it was just, it's its absolutely enchanting to look at. It's 10 years of photos. And, and she said, oh, you're in it. And I went, oh, brilliant. And <laughs> my kids are in it and other friends of ours are in it. And I have to say, I had like a good half hour flicking through the book and just, oh, ah, ooh, <laughs> you know, and just it brought back so much to me. It was absolutely the loveliest idea and, and so worth the money. And she said to me, I never print any photographs. I never print any of them. And I just said to myself, I'm going to do this. And it looks fantastic, and it's it's a it's a lovely um, kind of memento. You know the days when we used to press our photos into our photo albums, and I mean yeah. there's stacks of those in my parents' house. But uh, there's a few here, but it's it's kind of not a thing anymore. So um, in, back in the early days, I would have done that myself, but I haven't done it for years. Um, no, it's so. it's interesting. It, it is so, and I think that that that's a really great example, and I think. I, I I wasn't thinking in terms so much of a backpack. I I was thinking of a shoebox. I don't know if I was if the, if my legacy, my f- photographic legacy, could 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 be a, a few shoebox. decent photos in a shoebox. Um, and and maybe that's the maybe that's the entry path to to a vast archive of of digital photos. Uh, I don't know. Or maybe there's just like a you know it's the sharing of the photos that's important. I, I yeah I think the answer to this is going to be different for everybody, isn't it? So yeah, you know, I, I, I like the idea of a book. Uh, but Chris, what are you going to put in your backpack? <laughs> well, you know, I've I've thought about um, the idea of taking pictures of things to remember them, and interestingly enough, and that maybe started about ten years ago. I began to uh, not 
collect things anymore that don't have any use. I mean, just uh, the trinkets you bring from a trip, mm. the, the mask from Africa, the scarf from Nepal, whatever. That kind of stuff, I stopped probably 90% of that. I mean, every now and then you can't help because something has a meaning because of what what it represents to you. But um, the things, and if you if you if you were looking around here, there you know, there are a lot of things here, but um, they all serve a purpose. They are to make something, to produce something, to whatever, to to be useful. So I think I already have a bit of the distinction between my photos um, that are the things that are the memories and um when i see that mask in africa that i thought um th that maybe 20 years ago i would have brought home to hang up on the wall i will take a picture of that or several pictures of that i will document it and mm. keep it in my memory this way instead of carrying it home and uh, then having it collect <laughs> dust here and the the things the actual the, the physical things i have are um, for a purpose they have a purpose a physical purpose most can of the i time. ask um and this is a more general question to everybody, but uh, do we take pictures for ourselves or for others? I take pictures for myself, mostly. Myself, for absolutely, myself, yeah. 100%. Yeah, m mostly for me, but I do take pictures for others as well, friends, family, you know, Sort of as the designated oh, photographer, mm. if you like. But. Well, so, sometimes but, uh, it's about sharing something. Uh, sometimes it's about putting them on social media to get a laugh from others, but... Um, most of those pictures are because I make the decision to take those, and that decision is based on on something, something, an internal trigger of sorts. Yeah. Well, yes, but but I think it goes beyond that. You take the picture. Do you ever have a sense when you're taking the picture that you want to share it, or that you're just taking it to trigger the memory? Because those are two different decisions <laughs> see where you're going there <sighs> i i i had someone on a photo tour who said uh i'm mostly taking pictures because when i go senile i want to be able to remember things <laughs> <laughs> so, maybe that's a valid a valid uh a valid yeah. reason yeah yeah i think there are different reasons for taking photographs for, for me sometimes it's documentary sometimes it's mm. It's experiment and just plain old fun. Sometimes it's my background conceit that I might actually be an artist of some kind. Uh, it's it. There's there's a whole range of different reasons. So I th I, I don't know that I have one answer to that. I'm afraid, which, which might which might actually undermine the whole of the argument I've been trying to put. Yeah, trying to discuss today <laughs> is is that actually photography is such a multifaceted thing that the you know we we really clearly are looking at just one facet of it today and. And 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 what to what extent might photography be able to replace some things does your, if you have to? Does your things? choice of gear affect, or I'll speak for myself. I'll parenthetically say that I take a lot of snapshots too. I t tend to use my iPhone for all of those things, just roughly. Some may turn into a more aesthetic or worked over. Uh, or accident of just perfect light and composition at the time. But when I carry my cameras, I, I'm looking for something else. Uh, it, it's very different. I rarely take snapshots with my, you know, bigger camera, my digital cameras, mm -hmm. but I always take snapshots with my iPhone. I, I think so I, I have I, something similar in the, the uh, and, and funnily enough, um, in our little shared album that we have, I, I pushed some photos into that shared album today, which relates to my pick of the week, um, which are just little snapshots of things that caught my eye, which were taken on my phone. Um, and if I mentally try and imagine taking that kind of shot, like running to the, the cupboard to get the big camera mm. or, 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 you know, and, and come back and take it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't work. And sometimes, sometimes you just don't want that fidelity either. Yeah, I've always wanted to take snapshots with uh, a four by five. And in fact, um, many years ago, maybe 20 years ago, I had an old Polaroid converted to a four by five. Uh, the problem is, of course, you get two pictures and then like yes. you're done and it, you, things are usually happening so fast. And this is handheld, right? Uh, but I, I would say that 
for example, shooting a color transparency four by five at a party randomly with a flash uh-huh. is a sight to behold, no matter what you <laughs> shoot. By the way, get a get a graphmatic back. You have six shots then in rapid succession. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they don't work too well. <laughs> I have three. <laughs> <laughs> Send one over. <laughs> I'm just crazy like that. Okay. Um, okay. Well, I don't think we quite heard from Jeremiah about his what, what he was going to carry in his backpack or his shoebox. What are you going to take forward from this, Jeremiah? Uh, maybe, um, you know, I, I, I'm trying not to carry a lot of weight uh, as I move forward. Um, I think that... that f- for me, so much of my process is connected to, say, walking, taking the picture, looking at it, editing it, working at it, uh, assessing it, and printing it. So there's an, a, a long kind of road for me before I get to an image that I think, ah, oh, that's... that's um, that's something that I either want to have for myself, my family, or, or whatever. I uh, Just by, you know, again, a sidebar, I printed for a very good friend of mine a portrait of him that I had taken maybe 10 or 12 years ago that I finally pulled out of Lightroom and really worked at and made a gorgeous black and white print and printed it for him. And he, had, he hadn't seen the picture for you know i don't even know if he saw the original um but sometimes it takes a long time to to gestate for me uh what kind of image and just the process of taking it and its eventual kind of outing into the world uh may be quick or it may be slow i never uh, you know i never know how to deal with it so it's very hard for me to say oh i i want to put this in my in my backpack to carry around because i um, I use photography in so many different ways. Interesting. If that makes Interesting. sense. Probably doesn't. Okay. Well, so yes, very personal responses to all of this stuff, um, which is, uh, uh, which is, which is great actually, cause we don't want group think, do we? So, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, probably, uh, time to start wrapping up now, uh, and head for our picks of the week. Uh, so who shall I pick to go first? How about Ema? What's your pick of the week, Ema? My pick of the week, not directly photography related, but related to the other podcasts that I do. Uh, this week we spoke to the director of the Glucksman Gallery, which is in UCC in Cork City. Fabulous building. Um, fabulous gallery. Um, their website's amazing. So really well worth a look and loads of creative stuff to do on it. Um, for lockdown sort of um they've really adapted their program really really well to suit the current um environment so um kind of open in that way that it opens it up to the world at a a grander kind of level and they've they've fiona the lady that we spoke to was telling us how they'd actually grown their audience on, on a kind of a global scale because of the activities that they ran during the lockdown period it's so a beautiful website Go and check it out and have a look at that. Okay. We'll, Not we'll directly do. photography related, I know, but um, uh, art related and beautiful. All, all good. At. Very all, aesthetic. All good. All good. Uh, right. So, uh, Chris, do you have a pick of the week? It's not yes, in the I show do. notes yet. Uh, I, I didn't put it in the show notes, but um, it is Olympus. Because ah. um, I think we should pour one out for Olympus because they just uh, <laughs> announced yeah. that they are selling their photo business uh, to a company that I think buys businesses that aren't in good shape and tries to restructure them and then sell them again. So those are the, it's just the same company that bought Sony Vio uh, years ago and we've oh, seen where that, that had okay. gone. So I think, I feel... Yeah, that's a. It feels. It doesn't feel nice to see a traditional old photo company to probably leave the market. So. No, and, no. And can we and, also say that a lot of the Americans, Robert Frank's famous book, uh-huh. many of those shots were done on a small Olympus yep. camera. So yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it is. It is a shame. <laughs> I felt. I. I. I think Olympus as a company had some different ideas. Yes, she is Olympus. 
I think they they had some different <sighs> ideas from others, and I think that was a good thing. Um, oh yeah, oh yeah. But uh, yes, okay, uh, Jeremiah, what's your pick of the week? Well, in keeping with your minimalist um, sensibility this week, I, I, I'm. I, I put a few links to this photographer called um, Masao uh, Yamamoto, and uh, he's a, just a, a brilliant minimalist photographer who has a very specific sensibility, and I encourage uh, all of us or any of the listeners, viewers, to, to seek him out, whether it's online. But if you can see his pictures in real life, they are amazing. He does work um, not only with minimalist imagery, but prints them extremely small uh, to be held in a hand and often will put them in a box to be viewed in, in a gallery. They're very special. They're very Zen. They're very, uh, there's a lot of haiku in it and um, it, it, they're very poetic. So I, I, I highly recommend uh, him as a, um, just a, an interpreter of a different approach to photography. Mm. Interesting, interesting. I, I have to say, I think small prints are underrated. Um, I, I yeah. think every you know, there, there's a there's a lot of yeah, a, a lot of um, questioning, especially especially on the internet. People say, oh well, you you need you need millions and millions of pixels because you know what if you had to print one of your photos the size of a truck or a house? And it's like I can't quite imagine needing to do that with any of my photos, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> okay, so I actually have two uh, picks of the week uh, this week, um, both with a uh, a link to, to the theme. Uh, the first is um, a, a thing that many of our listeners will already have available to them. And, and this is simply that in the, in the iPhone native camera app, there is a filter called Silvertone. Um, and uh, for some reason this week, I've got thoroughly enthralled by this thing <laughs> and I've been using it a lot and I've been using it to capture some abstract stuff that is really more about light and dark uh, the, than it is about you know actual images as such. Did you shoot it with the filter on? So were you looking at the pictures through the filter or were you applying it afterwards? No, I was shooting with the filter on. Okay. Um, which is is not as dangerous as it sounds because you can always hit the revert <laughs> button these days and get back to the original color one. But the uh, no, I was looking for for I was looking for stuff that would look good in that kind of image, and so um, uh, I can't tell you why it just caught my eye a week or so ago, and I've been playing around with it ever since and thoroughly enjoying it, even though I hardly ever shoot black and white. Um, and the second one uh, is is more more to today's theme about how you take things forward. And and um, so I have here uh, a, a little zine uh, that has been produced by a friend of mine, uh, a good friend of mine called Anil Mystery. Um, and uh, he is uh, a, an independent freelance creative. Does all sorts of stuff. He's worked in TV and and and. Uh, other other media like that but he works as an independent photographer as well and all sorts of stuff like that and and he's just created um uh, a new zine and called gar um which is uh, <laughs> uh which is there's some great stuff in it um i'll put a link to his uh, to his um website in the show notes but but he he just plays around with stuff sometimes um i have another book of his which is all about old mattresses he'd taken a whole collection of photos of mattresses that had been dumped on the street but he'd put that in a book with a bunch of statements by middle-aged men about how they feel that they were being left out of the world. <laughs> <laughs> I like the so, title, Gar. I really like yeah, that. Yes, the, tit the title is Gar. And if you can see the front cover there, he's <laughs> there there's, so, there's some Photoshop trickery in this just for, just for giggles. Uh, um, uh, and and, and it's, it's, it's a lot of good fun. There's quite a lot of stuff taken in and around Brighton and, and around Pride Week and stuff like that. So it's actually quite timely uh, as well at the moment. Uh, so uh, yeah, um, I will put a link in the show notes to that. Go go check it out, everybody. Go go buy them. Go buy the zines. Zines are great. Mm -hmm. Great way of taking stuff forward, and and good process to select for those as well. <laughs> anyway, um, I think that's uh, that's about it for this week. Uh, we yeah. So this has been oh show number one hundred and thirty seven. I think um, and uh, yep and uh, you know the first one with slightly higher resolution video. I would encourage you actually uh, to go and have a look at the YouTube video for this. Again, there'll be um, uh, it's, it's on your channel, I think, isn't it, Chris? 
it's on it's on my channel we are link, we're going to link to that specific video on a playlist where all the tfop videos are in and will be in in the future um yeah so, i mean that, that's great I've, we, we've had a couple of comments on the one last week that that uh that that was good to see good to see people <laughs> engaging engaging someone with it. someone said jeremiah on the podcast sounds like a jeremiah and on the video he looks like a jeremiah whatever that I, means but i was so relieved uh, it, must you, it, it, it must be comforting it must be comforting very comforting especially when i woke up this morning there we go <laughs> so well it's yes good good to have that external verification of your identity uh, <laughs> so it's uh so yeah go and go and have a look guys um uh and we'll put a, a link in the in the show notes if you're listening to this on, on a podcast um you yeah, know we'll put a link in the show notes so that oh, as well. and, but by the way before anyone gets worried this is a podcast first and foremost it will stay a podcast so you don't have to give up on us listening to us on your commute or while doing chores no t the future of photography is a an audio podcast to listen to in the first place the video is tacked on but well we're doing this as as, Absol as absolutely long as it works yes good good reminder chris good reminder certainly <laughs> um, and, and with that in mind uh, you might also choose to go to the future of photography.com where you'll get the whole back catalog of all of the audio that we've produced as a podcast uh, for the last <laughs> how many how many years three years maybe hundreds anyway anyway that that's about it for uh for this week um thank you very much everybody for listening big diamond um, oh <laughs> uh, <we> <laughs> cheers to that too <laughs> thank you very much for listening and um, we will be back next week take care goodbye until then bye bye bye, bye, -bye.